what is your process for for adding new products that, uh, like new cannabinoids into your portfolio? Yeah, um, we got a big pipeline. You know, the wish list is big. I'm, um, we have prototypes. And so, you know, things that I find uh, interesting based on preclinical literature, based on what people are telling me, we usually make a prototype and share it around with the staff and with myself and some of our colleagues and see what people think. You know, a good example of this is our, I think it's our newest product still. It's a, a combination of CBDA and CBGA. So CBGA, like who knows anything about CBGA? You look in the peer review literature, there's so little on it. Um, you know, a few a few more hits just this past year, but it's is it is it similar to CBG, which we also don't know that much about, but we know more. Is it different than CBG? You know, a lot of unknowns there. But there was this um, you know a preclinical study that gained a lot of headlines about how it could inhibit uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus mm. in its uh, infectious potential in mice and in cells. And so we thought, well, you know, we've seen such impressive results with the acidic cannabinoids, the THCA and the CBDA. It kind of makes sense for us to explore CBGA next. Let's see what it does. We started playing around with it. And we found that in combination with CBDA, it seemed to be doing something special. Um, it, you know, we weren't testing it against SARS, you know, like, like against COVID. Uh, we were just taking it and see how we felt. And people were reporting very similar things that this combination made them feel alert, awake, focused, like in the zone, resilient to stress. You know, I didn't expect that. I still don't exactly know what's the mechanism of action. Um, but enough of us felt like, well, this is a prototype worth bringing to market that you know, that's what we did. And we still have so much to learn from it, mm. you know? I mean, even even CBG, I knew it had a lot of potential. What, what do we know about it in humans right now, other, other than the anecdotes? Almost nothing, right? There's one survey study and the people in that study weren't, you know, the, the data is um, just not very clear. Like it's a good starting point, but we don't know exactly how much most of them were taking or what what other you know cannabinoids they were taking it for, uh, and and so because of that we have currently have an ongoing uh, another survey of CBG users uh, to try to to try to clarify that. But what it it seems like you get you get something that's a hit in a small number of people. You allow other kind of cannabis uh, enthusiasts to to start using it, and then before too long we've got some signals that are worth following. Then we do the observational research. We kind of confirm what we think we're seeing. And then, you know, maybe that leads to more more clinical trials or more animal research. It's, you know, it's so backwards with cannabis that we start with humans and then we go to the, yeah. to the road <laughs> at least after that. 